Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to GMI Hub Online. I hope you had a great week and a great weekend. And we are today are so excited, as usual, because we have a great topic that we're going to be talking about today, which is kind of a carryover from last time we were together. Um, and it's about gaining momentum, how artists can gain momentum in the Canadian music industry. So before we go any further of uh, introducing our guest, I'd like to welcome our co-host, Dale Borland. Dale. Well, hello there, and welcome to all you online online viewers. Thank you so much for joining us at the GMI Hub Online tonight. It's going to be a great show. We're going to be talking about, um, you know, radio marketing, your particular music, and how to make it go the, to the, to the direction that it needs to go, and digital, digital media, and all that kind of fun stuff. But before we go on, I want to let you know about the GMI Hub. The GMI Hub has a website. We also uh, we're right here live on on uh, on on YouTube. We want to thank you for watching. Um, if you are your first time visitor, uh, please hit the subscription. That'd be good to subscribe. And uh, we also have uh, um, our like button and the the uh, the bell, the notification bell. Next time we upload a video, so it'd be great for you guys to have all that stuff. And uh, so you can let we'll let you know the next time you get a video or we get a video put up. Okay, so I also want to talk about the website, gmihub.ca. Now, gmihub.ca is a kind of a website to tell you a bit about what we're doing and who we are. And you can check that out anytime, gmihub.ca. Also, we do a monthly newsletter, which is emailed out to all of you if you've given us your email address. Now, if you go to gmihub.ca, you can uh, go and check out. There's a place where you can give us your email, and we will drop you the uh, every month a you know hub happening. And it will be great to have you receive that. Also, if you're an artist or you're a promoter or you've got a CD coming out, if you're a musician artist who's doing something and you want other people to know about it, the GMI Hub wants to help promote you. And we will put you into our hub happening and we'll let everybody on our mailing list know about what you're doing. So you may want to take advantage of that. That'd be really, really good for you and for us to connect with you as well. Anyways, thank you so much for joining us because tonight's going to be amazing. It's going to be fun as we talk to Holly Taylor. Yes. And since you got the pre-interview, <laughs> the pre-introduction, yes, we're so happy that Holly Taylor is able to join us. Ta Holly Taylor is the founder of 1016 Entertainment, which is basically a, an independent Canadian music promotion company. Basically, they are the go-between between artists and radio stations. They help artists' music get to the radio stations right across Canada. And we are so thrilled that Holly is able to be with us. So welcome, Holly. <laughs> Yay. Thank you so much. It's good to be here. Uh, so we have a have studio here. audience. We don't have a studio audience. Here yeah, we need one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, we do. We, do. we can pretend. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. So let's 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 so so Holly kind of knows what's happening here. So last week we had our guest Rochelle Luke, and at towards the end of the conversation, we were talking about the value of of mm -hmm. Uh, Canadian or homegrown Christian music. And at the end, um, Rochelle mentioned a few things that were kind of, um, you know, reasons why some artists get a little discouraged about getting further in the Canadian industry. And she mentioned geographical challenges. She mentioned pop, uh, population density issues, all this kind of stuff. So I, I say all that as a, that was an interesting precursor. So then it makes me go, Holly, you know, in your experience dealing with artists and dealing with radio stations right across Canada, what what is your take on the Canadian music market right now? Yeah, it's challenging. I mean, of course, we're coming out of a pandemic, so that doesn't help. I mean, right. it was such a devastating couple of years for artists who are touring, who are trying to make music. A lot of them like to go to the US to be able to record and write their music there. And I think it's it's helpful when you can do collabs. But I mean, I mean, we got really good, I guess, at doing collabs through Zoom and people calling each other and utilizing other technologies. But there's just something about sitting in a room with people and just being able to um, share the chemistry and and create something together. So there's a lot of things that have been challenging for artists the past two years. But like Rochelle had said, geographically, it's tough in Canada. 
I mean, if you go down to the States, you can hit up five major markets within two hours where here mm -hmm. you're driving two mm -hmm. or more just to get to the next big city. So there's a lot of challenges being a Canadian artist, let alone a Canadian Christian artist. Yeah. Well and that's, that's one of the things that was mentioned is just like the idea of traveling to from city to city. It's, mm -hmm. you know, what one person can get to in like, in, as you say, in a couple hours, the number of cities you can hit in a couple hours. Well, maybe we can hit a number of towns in that hour, but it seems like they're all in the same area, the same vicinity. So yeah, yeah, that's one of the challenges. So, but now you've worked with artists. I mean, I mean, you've, in a sense, you've been helping artists overcome some of those challenges by getting their songs on radio. So what, like, how has that been? And, and, and what seems to have worked and what seems to have been some of the challenges? Like, I'm really curious. I know this is not one of the questions I put down for you, but it was kind of like, <laughs> I'm kind of curious to find out how this, how this actually works for you. <laughs> Yeah. How do you get these artists and how do you help them? <laughs> yeah, no, it's a great question because when you take a look at Christian radio and the music that's available, it's it's tough. It's challenging because in the mainstream side of things, you have your rock station, you've got your hip hop stations, you've got your jazz stations, your talk stations, your contemporary hit radio, your AC. But when it comes to a Christian station, it's a specialty license. It is a, a station that has a faith-based initiative and there's just that one station where the music available is all those same formats. So mm -hmm. for a Canadian Christian artist, you kind of have to create something for radio and it might not necessarily be your style. And so then you have to think, is radio really the, the direction that I want to go? So there's some really huge challenges when it comes to um, an artist and their music. And so for, for us at 1016, it's just about having those initial conversations to find out what is your overall goal and where do you want to end up? Is radio a part of that plan or is it not? There are incredibly successful artists who don't get their songs played on the radio. So radio is just one part of your promotional pie. Mm -hmm. True. That's I think there's point. a lot of responsibility that maybe is on the artist before it gets to that. Um, like you're talking Absolutely. about, I want, to get, I want to get radio airplay. You know, it's, so, well, wait a minute. What have you done as an artist to prepare for that? So, um, like, oh man, it goes into self-promotion branding and, and f your story and all that thing. And there's a, there's a bit of a, yeah. maybe a, a dis disconnect with what's happening between the artists and their expectations. Yeah. How are you finding yeah, that? Just, um, I mean, I find it good. It's not my first rodeo. We've been doing this for 11 years. And before that I was working, uh, in radio, I was working with artists as a manager. And so, I mean, 20 plus years, it's always been about managing an artist's expectations because a Christian station doesn't have to play your music just because you're a Christian and your song is about Jesus. Mm -hmm. So it has to be good because the stations are responsible for what hits the airwaves. They have certain criteria that they are legislated to uh, uphold from the CRTC. Plus, they have a responsibility to offer entertainment that their listeners want to listen to, whether it's speaking <laughs> programs or music. So, I mean, if only your family's loving your music, then maybe the music isn't quite ready for radio. <laughs> That's actually kind of funny because I'm pretty sure <laughs> that's a lot of us. <laughs> okay, so how do you guys? <laughs> so I have visions now of all these artists coming to you, going, "This is my song. Take it to radio." <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> Isn't my baby then, beautiful? And, <laughs> and, <laughs> and then you end up. And then you end up do you actually I'm get sorry. that? Do you have people actually doing that for you? Like just coming oh, in yeah. like, here's my song. Can you take it to radio? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, we do. I mean, not the rah, 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 rah part. But what's great about that is that they took the time and the effort to write a song and to really try to be creative. And, mm -hmm. you know, even a, a good song can become a great song. 
when the right team is around that that song. And so even though it might not be a home run initially, it doesn't mean it doesn't have that potential. Mm -hmm. um, we, we do hear, you know, the whole God gave me the song and it needs to be on airwaves. People have to hear it. Um, but it's not always a song that's good for radio. It doesn't mean it's not a good song. It just means it's not good for radio. There is a formula to radio. They have to be successful in order to stay in operation to be able to continue their ministry, reaching people and encouraging people. So um, if your song gets turned down at stations, it's not the end of the world. Either work on that song and find a way of making it work or try a new song. And, you know, Again, collaborations, I think, are a great place for artists to start. They're still cutting their teeth. Um, another really great thing is teaming up with the local music organizations. Pretty much every province has one. I know um, there's Alberta Music, there's Manitoba Music or Music Manitoba, but like every province has something. Um, and they're artists too. The, the base of the music industry is the same. You just happen to have an audience that wants to be encouraged and inspired within their faith but you still have to have excellence in all that you do and how you approach your, mm -hmm. your craft. Mm -hmm. Well said. That's true. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Indeed. I think that that's a really good thing to think about because you got to, it's like um, whenever you come into this industry, for lack of a better term, the industry, the music industry, there is a certain standard that is uh, set by uh, music. We're inundated by in the media. And uh, so, and, and it's even evident in, in worship music, um, worship mm -hmm. music um, and some of the big worship artists are, music is is um really on par with what's happening in the secular music realm and it, i mean it's still good worship but it's just like the, their techniques their uh equipment their gear their sound it's all it's all important to actually to have yourself in a place where there is a level playing field as far as quality is concerned absolutely yeah so just just to um this sort of might help audiences as well do you you deal with radio stations right across Canada, correct? As in Christian yeah. radio stations right across Canada, right? So yeah. from your knowledge, do do all the Christian radio stations have the same formula or are they slightly different? In other words, for example, with the style that they, they want to promote of, of the Christian slash gospel music, is it roughly all the same? Uh, which is normally, I guess, CCM kind of idea. Would it be roughly all the same, or do they do they vary? Like, do some stations favor more of a southern gospel feel, while some other stations may favor more of an urban feel? Like, do you find that at all? I think um, twenty years ago, it it was more diverse, but I think over the course of the past twenty years, stations have gravitated more to a CCM sound. Um, more alongs following what's the, you know, happening on the charts, for example, billboard, you know, and what artists are doing well. What's been very interesting to see, though, is that the music that's starting to get popular is more praise and worship. So there once was a time where um, it was CCM, it was more like your adult contemporary sound, and then it got a little bit more um, contemporary, and then just the way trends have gone, it's a little bit more praise and worship, and you're seeing bands like Hillsong, United, uh, you've got Bethel, you have, there's just so many of them um, that have come out and created worship songs that are also uh, worship songs that work great for radio. Um, Chris Tomlin, Matt Marr, they all have songs that get played in a corporate worship setting. And so it's been very cool just to see what's been happening with with music overall and how, yes, it's generally CCM, but as the trends shift and change, you're going to see that also with what is happening on radio. Because remember, it's the station's job to figure out what their market wants to hear, not the market next door. Right, mm -hmm. right. Okay, so what are some things that radio stations expect from artists when artists' music come to them? Mm, yes. Yeah, what are, what are, um, yeah, what's, yeah, what are the expectations for the artist and the expectations for the radio station? And how do, how do they, uh, you know, the stations, what they expect is for the artist disconnect that, that word we talked about earlier. 
Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. It's, um, we call it the triple win at 1016 Entertainment. So that is a win for the artist, a win for the station, which is a win for us. So how do we create this win? And that's getting rid of some of those roadblocks and those disconnects. So a win for a radio station will be a song that their listeners want to hear. A win for a station is a well-produced song with good lyrics. It's got a bit of a hook. It's not too long on average, and this is just an average, three minutes, 30 seconds. So there is a little bit of a song structure they're looking for as well. Like the song is slowly building so that, you know, at about the two minute mark, it's going to reach some kind of climax so that somebody who's listening can tune in at any point and know whereabouts that song is within that, that song length. So there's that song structure um, and having something that people want to listen to. And I know it sounds like you might be selling out if you're like, oh, I just have a, a hooky song, something that people will just listen to, like an earworm or something. But when you think about it, a station maybe has eight seconds to gain the attention of that listener, hopefully to keep them long enough to encourage and inspire them in their faith before they just will switch to another station because maybe that song didn't didn't speak to them, wasn't catchy enough. And if your song is that song that's dragging and not reaching any kind of excitement, you know, and then they lose that listener, that's kind of on you and your song. Well, ultimately it's up to them for choosing to play the song, but you just want to make sure you're right. You're writing and creating music for stations, which is why some artists mm -hmm. will have a radio edit to a song that's maybe a bit longer, maybe has a slower part. So writing songs for stations like that is really important. And then on the flip side, stations are also looking to find um, a bit of a, a track record. Are you online? If their listeners love you, can they find you? And that's important. And that's all the marketing side of things. So you've got a song great, but you still have to make sure you've budgeted for enough marketing to get the song out there. And I feel like mm -hmm. I've missed a part. That was more of the radio station side of things, but <laughs> hopefully that, that okay. answered your question. <laughs> no, we, we can well, do what it. Now? I think we have to you have to go to commercial, but I, I want to just say something before we do that is uh, you, you're talking about managing expectations of the artist here. And maybe we can go into that maybe after this little, this, this little post we've got here, um, talking about guidance you would give to an artist as far as um, understanding the experiences that they need to, you know, uh, um, have the expectations be real. We'll talk about that a little bit more after this little commercial. It's about the GMI Hub online. Are you writing a Christmas song? Do you want it on our Christmas CD? This year. Send us your song. For your chance on the CD. Submission deadline July 31st, 2022. Family Christmas Volume 3, Christmas 2022. So that is exciting. You can be part of our compilation CD if you're an artist out there and you like to write music and Christmas music is one of the things by July 31st. We want you to submit your song. Get it on our compilation. We would just love to have your music join us. Go to gmihub.ca. You can sub, uh, just join in uh, and, and subscribe to your music and whatever. Sub subscribe. What's the word I'm looking for? Anyway, just put your, put, it'd be great <laughs> to have you guys connect with us on that to be on our compilation CD uh, album. Awesome. That's 2022. All right. Uh, let's get back to it. How, okay. Now, I know you, you've probably got uh, guidance for certain artists to meet their expectations radio stations and and more than one way to do that i'm sure so what kind of guidance would your team give to artists who are to better you know give themselves an expectation when it comes to radio yeah generally we'll listen to their music first and then really start there as our our point of focus so vocals have to be good production has to be good has to be um, catchy lyrics have to be good and so if we think that it will be a song that will work for radio then we go to those next steps. So 
we would give them the guidance of making sure that their song is registered with SOCAN. So a bit of a checklist there. Are, are they online? How is their bio? Is it, you know, two sentences that doesn't really explain a lot about the artist or do they go into a little bit more detail to really introduce themselves to stations? Um, it's important that stations know who you are and what your passion is, your, your mission, because they have a responsibility with what they play. And so it's your responsibility as an artist to make sure you're giving them the tools to be able to, you know, make sure that your song is, if it's well received, that it can go further because people want to find out where it is because they were inspired or encouraged by it. So you have to have your ducks in a row for sure. And that mm -hmm. social media now, uh, I don't like social media, yeah. but yes, <laughs> that's something that also has to be a part, it's part of, of your what portfolio. We're doing, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. Like, we're, we're, okay, so this is this is probably the the hardest part for an artist potentially is getting that um, the branding, for lack of a better term, your look, the the, the artwork, the graphics, the, the 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 social media approach. It's it, how much, if any, um, coaching can you help an artist with when it comes to like doing a photo shoot or something like that. Yeah, it really depends on where the artist is. Uh, on our team, we have Robin, and so she's the one that handles all of the, the PR and marketing side of what we do. For myself and for Loretta, Loretta handles uh, most of the day-to-day -day operations with our campaigns. We will absolutely help an artist. Um, we've got, obviously, our, our Rolodex, if you will, of people that <laughs> uh, we know who do photography and who have been able to put together websites. And so we're more than happy to be that connector for an artist to help them find somebody who will be able to represent digitally or through a photo uh, who they feel they are. Because, I mean, some sisters are really great at taking photos or brothers. However, we've seen quite a few album artwork and artist f promo photos that you're just like, it's a little grainy. Um, <laughs> maybe that's not the best image for you at this point. You need to be a bit crisper, but uh, yeah, just never settle. And another great little tip is if there's an artist and you love their artwork for their album, you love their sound, check their liner notes and find out who did their stuff and use right, it as a, a research yeah. tool. I think also that the genre of the music probably del would under come to make you realize the direction of your artwork and, and how that might look. So yeah. maybe if, if you're an artist who does a certain style of music and I think this is just good for any artist out there. I don't care if you're Christian or not, but if you if you have a certain style of music and you have people say, hey, you're like this guy or you're like that guy, or you sound like this artist, look at what those artists are doing as far as their marketing is concerned, the image they're putting out, and try to see what you could do that complements that because you're sitting in that same stream of music. So that, there's something to think about, and it's a little easier on you as an artist to actually contemplate and think well how do i be able to you know it's look at somebody else is doing yeah. similar style of music and uh that'll help you help you guide uh, your direction now some of the couple couple of things that i think you've already kind of touched on already um we're talking about disconnects and you've kind of touched on it a little bit already but with two areas of disconnect that we've been hearing about are the area of quality of songs as well as the availability of the songs. Now I know that you've just touched on it a little bit, but can we review again what constitutes quality of a song? Mm -hmm. Yes, it has to be good. Um, and a good measure of that is if you think kind of similar to what you were saying, Dale, you know, if there's a, a band that you really like that you feel you emulate in some regard, they're kind of your inspiration play their song, then play your song and just see how your song stacks up to your now competition. How is the production versus theirs? How is the songwriting versus theirs? And, and don't just play it to family and friends who are close to you. Have people in your life who are willing to be truthful. And it's the people that kind of know you who maybe are excited about the fact that you're doing music, but will be really honest and, and play them the music, not just the 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 a cheerleaders and just see what they say yeah. or don't even tell them that it's you right oh i i found this new song 
I think it's cool. What do you think? And then they will be <laughs> honest and don't be hurt by what they have to say because it's better to hear it from them instead of having that song then be pitched to a station. And now that's been your first impression. Hmm. <laughs> that's a, that's a very good point and very good advice. <laughs> okay. So that's the quality. Moment. What's I mean, that? I, I've done that before. It's a vulnerable moment when you say to somebody, Hey, what do you think of this song? And you play your song yeah. and you're like, is that you? And you're like, maybe. <laughs> do you like it if you like it yes it's me <laughs> yeah it yeah. is very Let me tell you. and it's go ahead oh there's a reason why i don't write or sing music <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's like, it's like any entertainer if you go up on stage people are going to scrutinize you for if you're a public speaker if you're a comedian if you're an actor or a singer you're putting yourself out there and uh part of that is rejection and being mm -hmm. being a background in acting myself i understand what it's like to go to auditions i understand what it's like to be in front of thousands of people and there is that element of rejection you have to get calloused in a certain respect but you also have to have those people who you can really trust that what they say is something you can actually do to adjust what you're doing like calibrate the right direction and so that those those friends that maybe who are um have friends who are successful are there and if it's like holly for instance they're they're a friend of yours you can go to holly and you can say look uh what do i need to do and you can trust her opinion so i think it's important to have that circle of friends um that uh will be no nonsense but yet at the same time will say things to you that respect you as an individual and an artist mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the best kind of friend to have is one that's honest with you that cares enough to be truthful, so that you don't put something out that you would regret later on, you yeah. know, or, or you think, yeah. oh, I wish I reworked that course, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I could have, I could have said something differently, with less words, in a more powerful way. So those are the best kind of friends to have around mm -hmm. the ones that love you enough to be straight up and honest with you. Absolutely. And it's better to get that that feedback from them before you spend thousands of dollars on the song, whether yeah. and getting it out there after all that instead of it being in, uh, instead of um, waiting until after that expenditure mm -hmm. and then going, oh, mm -hmm. I just wasted all that Why didn't money. You tell right. me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want to hurt your feelings. Well, now no. you just wasted my money. You best. You yeah. best. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so so Holly, you said quality is basically compare. It's in a way, it's a comparing what you're doing, like what your personal output is, to your favorite artist that's already out there, whoever you're you're emulating, and then seeing if there's a match. That's what you suggest is quality. And before that, you were saying, you know, the song needs to be catchy. The song needs to, you know, have that hook, has to have that sound, that that earwig, or that something that that keeps someone's attention at least for the first seven seconds. <laughs> so that at least if it's gone to a radio station, the radio station will, will say, hey, this is working for us, win-win or triple win, as you said beforehand. Um, so it's it's lyrics, it's sound um, quality, and we are actually going to delve into that hopefully a little bit more when we go into studio talks, because because this is one of the reasons I'm mentioning this quality, and I'm kind of hanging on that a little bit more because we want to delve into that a little bit more about the quality, even from the tech side. What does that mean? There's there's a little uh, hint of what we're going to be mm -hmm. talking about next week. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> but okay, so we we're talking quality. Um, now let's talk about availability. Again, I, I think Holly, you touched on it already, but let's talk about uh, availability and how can how can an artist make a song available to radio stations? Mm -hmm. um, by hiring us. <laughs> yeah, I knew that was coming. <laughs> There's the line right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, check us out at 1016entertainment.com. Uh, no, um, of course, yes, having somebody help you get your song to radio is important. Building relationships, that's for, for me, 
for our team, in fact, really the bottom line is, is the relationship side of things. That's kind of how I view us. Actually, we're just relationship curators. Um, and sadly, we've had several artists outgrow us because then they've had the relationships already built and they release a song and the stations are just like, oh, yeah, we know them. We added it. Um, yeah. So that's that's bittersweet. We did a really great job initially, <laughs> but it's about the relationships and it's about finding ways to support the stations. Maybe they're doing a share a thon and there are a couple stations who love having artists say, um, thanks for supporting Christian radio. You know, it's because of this incredible station that we've been able to have our music played. And so there's just so many ways as an artist that you can come alongside um, your local Christian station or ones across the country, depending on how much groundwork you've already put down. So yeah, uh, making yourself available, you know, not every station will do interviews, but if they are, you know, making yourself available, being on time, being present, being prepared, um, doing the work really is, is what it comes down to. When you're doing the work and you've made those relationships happen, that's how you become available because you're already either giving them the music in a way that they they need it, or you're at a place where they needed you and you've been humble and just willing to serve. Mm -hmm. That's a great- And yeah, coming to radio how? is, Sorry, go ahead, Cheryl. I was gonna say, that's just a great point because how often, I, I, I'll say this, I, I have yet to come through to meet an artist that actually is actually incorporating that in their, can I say in their marketing <laughs> you know, strategy yeah. to actually come alongside a radio station and say, how can, how can I as an artist serve you radio station? We hear about how can we serve churches? How can we serve you know other ministries maybe how can we even serve the um companies like the uh world vision and you know child care i forgot the name of it but you know but how can we come alongside other nonprofits? but very rarely do we hear about how can we come alongside a radio station so that's a really good point i'm just well, emphasizing also, that you're, you're right but the, the radio marketing idea of it too if we could talk, talk about media buys maybe you could talk a bit more about that for us holly yeah so typically we use a media buy for when an artist is going on tour um and it's a really great way of continuing to bu to build those relationships and so you're going on tour and you team up with the stations and you do a media buy where you buy commercials to get the word out about your event or maybe you're going to tap more into their online or their digital um, side of what the radio station has to offer. But it's a really great thing to keep in mind and to try to budget for, because to get those media buys, you're also now financially helping the station because um, stations are either all listener supported, they are half listener supported, or they're all commercial. That means all of their money comes from com um, from clients and, and from the yeah. commercial side advertising. That's what I'm looking for. Thank yeah, yeah, you. Yeah. Um, so. It's, uh, it's an, if, if you can, and you can have a budget for it, you're getting the word out about your event and you're supporting them in a very tangible way. If they've been supporting your music or even if they haven't been, buy a commercial, have a little clip of your song, <laughs> right? Like mm -hmm. there's a lot of ways to, to work around it because maybe your music doesn't work. I think mm -hmm. of, um, Steve Bell, Carolyn Aarons, they've gotten a couple songs on radio, but most people know them and love them because of that interaction, because they are incredible performers. And Steve Bell, I think is like the best storyteller. Him and Brian Jerkson yeah. are like my favorites. Um, <laughs> just go to a show and you're just like, can you say another story, please? And so <laughs> that's... <laughs> so we all want to sit around they, a circle around them. <laughs> I know, right? There's just something, they build incredible connections and they've made their whole career in music based around that. I mean, yeah. Brian Jerkson has incredible worship music, so that's another whole story. But um, so there's artists who didn't really use radio to right. become mm -hmm. household names. So maybe mm -hmm. your music doesn't play on the radio, but maybe you've got a, a show coming up and so you buy commercials and your music is somewhat on the station, even if it's just a quick 10 seconds. So mm -hmm that's kind of a becomes a win-win you're getting promotion um and you know the station's also being helped financially and maybe mm -hmm. there's a, a partnership so anyway i forget the point of your question but the media buys mm -hmm. so touring yeah. that's kind of the main thing um but maybe right. you just want to do a big old splash because 
you have a CD coming out. Oh my goodness, I just dated myself. You have a CD coming out. <laughs> Um, your yeah. A new song release. <laughs> new song release. <laughs> there you go. Digital format. That's right. Thank you. But even yeah. if you are going to release it digitally, you know, most stations now are streaming online, or they've got podcasts on their site. Right. So get creative. Maybe your commercial is about you know, you know, click the link on the station's website and download my music. Like just yeah. have fun with yeah. it. Everyone tries like do the same thing, but we're kind of in the wild west right now between digital right. and music. And there's just a lot of ways to work together with radio. Right. And you did touch on something that about the, the an artist telling the story and how that becomes like, oh, he's telling another story and that that's great. But if we are able to own our stories, like, uh, and tell about maybe a wild story or our music related story or something that's ministry related, find those stories, uh, write them down as an artist, write them down, memorize those stories and tell people those stories. And as you're interacting on social media, as you're d worried about, you know, um, ways to promote your up and coming events or your, or your music releases, those stories are essential, I think, to connect with your audiences. And so I know Holly did touch on that uh, from a live uh, present presentation point of view, but I think these are really good tools to connect with audiences when it comes to uh, connecting with your audience in a promotional aspect too. So that's something an artist could also put in their ammo and ammunition in their tool belt or whatever to help them to promote themselves as an artist. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, that's such a, a great point. I have a friend who coaches artists um, in the US. And so a big part of her job is just teaching the artist how to tell their story mm. and, you know, making it concise, making it powerful. Um, just as you would approach a song, like how yes. do you craft your story? Um, mm. It's, she had this like one line where somebody was just like in a really like a pit of depression. And she's like, how else can you say that? So it's not uh, focusing in on the dark, of that situation but like mm -hmm. and then you see mm -hmm. the light then you see jesus right or right. what well, one man meant for good or just like there's mm -hmm. so many creative ways like you're an artist have yeah, fun exactly. with your own music, story music. too exactly. yeah yeah and it's so it's so important in building relationships making connections with your um your listeners and uh just being able to be a great storyteller is really important yeah, because we do tell stories in our music. So, I mean, mm -hmm. let's let's allow ourselves to be able to share those stories other ways. And don't be shy. <laughs> Absolutely. No. So awesome. you're, you're, you're right. You're right. Because a lot of people, they get up on stage and all, or, or they, they, they feel vulnerable. And it's hard for them to kind of say, I'm not going to let this all out. People are going to reject me. And again, that's part of this, of the, uh, the journey yeah. of being an yeah. entertainer. You will always yeah. find those elements of rejection. Just move forward. Let that be. Yeah. Find your center, which, you know, as Christian artists is Jesus and really mm -hmm. listen to what he's telling you to share. It doesn't have to be everything, but that's why it's important mm -hmm. to spend time creating a bit of maybe a script, maybe just like a pathway as to how you want to share your story. Because that, again, like I said, develops the relationships and connection. And that's so important in, in what we do. Indeed. One thing I am hearing is with the creativity, and, and I guess this is something I want to I wanna mention too. When we talk about promoting ourselves and we use terms like marketing and branding, it's so easy to freeze because we think, I don't know anything about marketing or branding or, or anything like that, or even, you know, tell your story or build relationships from a business. Like we have this vision of people in, you know, three piece suits and ties and briefcases. And I'm here to make a sale to you when real in reality, when it comes to artists, quote unquote, marketing or branding themselves, really, it boils down to using that same creativity that they're using in their songs that they apply to their songs or apply or what they use to apply to relating to an audience is what they need to use to apply to relating to what sounds like with radio stations, with churches, with other entities um, in order to build their fan base, 
as well as build the relationships with all these other entities that they want uh, to, to have access to so that their music can be revealed, shown, shared, that kind of thing. Am I hearing correct? Am I, am I off my rocker saying this or what? <laughs> no, spot on. Spot uh, yeah. on. <laughs> You're off your rocker yeah, for other reasons. Um, oh, thanks a lot, Dale. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, oh, yeah. I think it's, it's really good that what you're touching on is something I think we've heard over and over again from some art called authenticity. You know, when you're talking about mm -hmm. somebody who, if you are an artist who does write and you write well and you do good music, it should also reflect in your promotion, your marketing. Um, so it takes some time, I think, to maybe to get down to the nitty gritty of what that might look like. But I'm, I'm sure if you work with people like Holly or you work with people who are helping you with as far as the marketing side of things or people who've done it before, that's another thing. If you're journeying with somebody who's an artist who has done that, it's also good for you to, to see how they've done it and, and try to emulate that. And that, that helps you as well. So I think those are all good. So what bits of advice then? Let's summarize. What bits of advice would you want to give artists today? Um, on making it like so we're, we're, what we're talking about is is um, gaining momentum in the canadian music scene okay so we've been talking primarily about using radio to do that and 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 how we can build relationships with radio and how we can use our music and make sure that our music kind of fits to help radio stations in order or at least having it in mind that what we are creating it's not for ourselves, it is for this entity, which in this case is radio. Um, what bits of advice, and it's probably stuff that you've already said before, but even if you, it's a summary, what bits of advice would you give artists today on how they can build momentum? Where can they start to build momentum in the Canadian music industry? I would say the key word, I mean, there's tons, but we'll start with consistency and just being consistent with your character, with your craft, um, keep writing and don't take a no to heart because like I said, it could be a really great song. It's just not one that fits the radio format and making sure that you are the best that you can be. Your voice is an instrument. So if you're not practicing, if you're not getting coaching, then you're not really using your instrument. You're just mm -hmm. kind of at that entry beginner level. There are so many tips and tricks that a vocal coach can give you to really help you become strong vocally. That's how you're going to relay your message. That's how you're gonna be authentic. So do the work. You know, keep practicing, keep writing, write, 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 team up with other writers and musicians and just really, really focus in on what God is calling you to do. Mm -hmm. So consistency, Christ, I'm trying to think of like all C words here for you guys, but um, <laughs> that's, that's what I would say. It all yeah. starts with God's calling for you. Then it's like, and I hear this a lot. It's just like, well, I made it for God, so it should be good. But we are called to excellence. So if you aren't doing the things to be the best, then are you really being excellent in, in your craft? And it's tough because it's a ministry. I get it. And it makes it weird mm -hmm. when you start mm -hmm. adding in money and business and it makes it feel sometimes yucky. But this is how you impact people. You look at the mainstream music world and they are doing their music with excellence. That's why they have all of the listeners and the audience, um, right? Because they have a, a big audience to start with. It's not a niche market, but they're writing great music that people want to hear and they want to hear it on repeat and they want to get it on Spotify and all the digital places. And that, that could be you too. So put yeah. in the work. I think That's you've it. hit it a couple of times talking about co-writing uh, and it's, it's a it's a really good tool for an, a young artist who is just starting or for someone who's mm -hmm. not getting enough traction. Um, find somebody that you can co-write with. There's also a connection there. There's um, accountability there. 
is that we, one of our our mantras we talk unity and community and mentorship and talent growth in all those areas you have uh, the community of somebody else and that's there's also that um the blending of people's thoughts and ideas and learning how to write and and then the the, the growth that can come from that so it the, i mean i I think you've touched on it a couple of times throughout the conversation, but I just want to bring uh, this to a point that if you're an artist who, who's maybe you're, you're written stuff and you're on your acoustic or you're on your piano and you're just doing your thing and, and you're not able to get the confidence, perhaps that's what you need. Find somebody who's doing the same thing you are. Get together and, and uh, write some songs. Have some fun with it. Um, um, there's one artist I know that um, many years ago I was talking to and he, he was doing some stuff and busy doing but he was in a machine what i call the machine the record label was doing this and he was doing that and he was punching uh, putting this stuff out and he'd lost the joy of being an artist and uh i think that once we get back into the fun of being involved in music it'll become um yeah there's the hard part there's the business side of it i get that but we'll, we, let's try and enjoy the process and find those people that we can connect with and uh, become a big family to help each other and that's what the GMI Hub is all about. Uh, we have a compilation CD coming up uh, for this uh, Christmas coming up. And we've been uh, having two other years previous, uh, 2000, and, um, we have the volume one and volume two. And this year we're doing volume three. And it's, um, it's, it's our Christmas, family Christmas volume three. And we would love for you to be able to submit your song to that uh, compilation CD. So uh, check this little promo out. GMI Hub is accepting new songs for their 2022 Christmas compilation. To find out how to submit your song, go to www.gmihub.ca today. GMI Hub Family Christmas Volume 3. Oh, 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 oh. So we just want to encourage you to submit your songs and let us help you get your music out there. We would love to be a part of your uh, of moving you forward in your music. That's awesome. Well, you know what? This has been <laughs> this has been a great conversation, and I hope that all of you that have been watching have gotten something out of this. Holly, thank you so much for being with us and sharing your insights. Um, it's been absolutely awesome. You have a great smile, by the way. <laughs> No. So <laughs> I like well, to laugh. Before we uh, go, awesome. Holly, is, there, is there anything that you think that was left unsaid that maybe that you thought, hey, we should have touched on this part? Well, what, what's your thoughts on something we may have needed to talk about? Oh, I don't know. I think we covered a lot today. Um, I just, mm -hmm. if I can just encourage any of the the artists who are maybe feeling like they couldn't get on radio or maybe they feel like their songs aren't good enough, you know, just to continue doing what you're, you're, you're passionate about, keep making the connections. I loved it. We talked about um, the unity. We are a community and we should be here to support each other. I hear a lot of artists who are in smaller communities and they just feel like they're completely alone and everyone's trying to reinvent the wheel. Um, reach out and connect with other people. Know that you're not alone. <laughs> Pretty much every artist feels the same way. And so I just want to encourage you just that you're not alone. There's an army of people who are all throughout our nation feeling the same way, trying to write music. It's tough. It's really tough to be a Canadian Christian artist. There's a lot of mm -hmm. things stacked up against you. Um, but you got this. If God has brought you to it, he will bring you through it. Amen to that, right. sister. So that's 1016 right. Entertainment, that's for you guys. Check it out. That's right. And you know, and if you are looking for connection, as Dale already mentioned, you know, GMI Hub is uh, an organization that wants to encourage that. We want to encourage the unity, community, mentorship, and talent growth. We are we we know there are a lot of islands on their own but you don't need to be an island on your own if you're looking for connection connect with us at gmihub.ca and you know we would be happy to connect you we've already done that we've connected artists with producers we've connected um people from across the world <laughs> with different with other people that they otherwise would not connect with and um it's been amazing to see what god is doing through those connections 
And some of them, we don't even know what's happening, but God knows what's happening and that's what's most important. So if you feel like you're an island on your own, please reach out to us to gmihub.ca. We'd love to chat with you. We'd love to help you out in any way that we can. Okay. So again, thank you so much for being with us. Um, definitely follow us up on all the social medias <laughs> that we can think of. We're here on YouTube. If you haven't already, like, subscribe, and share this link. This, this talk, this, this conversation is going to be on YouTube and it's available for free. So anyone who can, who, who will benefit from this, share the link. We'd love for you to yeah. do that. You can, and you can also follow us on uh, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and TikTok. <laughs> I think we're on TikTok I, I, as well. I like to talk. If, if you guys have a TikTok account, please go on and, let, and follow uh, GMI Hub. We would like to be able to go live on TikTok. We're not able to do that yet because we haven't got enough followers. So that's your project for this week. Get onto TikTok and follow GMI Hub. That's right. And if we get how many how many followers do we need to have? Need a thousand. Yeah, right now. Oh, just, just a thousand. Up. We have to oh, get a thousand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we should do that. Yeah. Alrighty then. Uh, All right. Yeah. Onward to a thousand followers. <laughs> I'll follow okay. you guys. Oh, awesome. awesome. There she is, leading from example. <laughs> if you are a fan exactly. of Holly, you follow her so that you can follow us. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Oh, sorry, my mom anyway, doesn't guys. have TikTok, so. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, well. Anyway, guys, it's been absolutely awesome spending this time with you. Again, thank you so much, Holly, for joining us. Thank you, Dale, for co hosting. And thank you for watching us come back with us next week when we have a studio talk and we are going to continue the conversation on quality and how to create or what it means actually to have a, a song that's got the right quality to make it. Okay. We love you all and we'll see you next week. Bye for now. Bye. God bless. <laughs>